Episode 1, A Data Dilemma Satora's Quest in the Jungle of Jumbled Data In the first thrilling episode of our data saga, we meet Satori, a data scientist with a razor-sharp mind and a passion for puzzles that would put Sherlock Holmes to shame. Picture her stepping into a jungle, not of vines and trees, but of tangled, troublesome data. This isn't just a mess. It's a data disaster zone. She's presented with a dataset that has more issues than a gossip magazine. And her task? To tame this wild beast of information. So Tori rolls up her sleeves and dives into the chaos with the help of her trusty software sidekicks. She calls upon Python, the Swiss army knife of programming languages, versatile enough to handle any data pickle. Next, she summons the powers of Pandas, a library so adept at data manipulation it could juggle data points while making them sing. She doesn't stop there, for visual insights, she beckons Matplotlib and Seaborn, turning complex data into visual stories as easily as a magician pulling rabbits out of hats. These libraries are like her data detective squad, ready to sniff out clues and solve the mystery of the muddled data set. Our data heroine then embarks on a journey of exploratory data analysis, using programming techniques that are akin to casting spells. First, she conjures up descriptive statistics to get a sense of what the data looks like. Is it friendly and normal, or more like a data gremlin? She then casts the spell of data visualization, creating plots and charts that reveal hidden patterns and outliers as if she's shining a flashlight in a dark cave. Satori also performs data cleansing, scrubbing away the dirt of missing values and duplicates like a data janitor armed with a magic broom. It's like she's on a treasure hunt, where X marks the spot of valuable insights. As Satori bravely navigates through this labyrinth of data, let's see how well you've followed her adventure with this multiple-choice question. What is the primary goal of exploratory data analysis performed by Satori? A. To turn the data into a beautiful piece of modern art. B. To prepare a delicious data-based recipe for dinner. C. To thoroughly understand and clean the dataset, identifying patterns, anomalies, and insights. D. To find the best font for presenting the data in a report. Choose carefully, and may your data journey be as exciting and revealing as Satora's. Welcome to Episode 2, A Cleansing Start. Here our data cleaning guru, Satori, dons her digital gloves and apron, ready to scrub the dirt off our data sets. Picture Satori as the Mary Poppins of data, but instead of a magical umbrella, she's armed with a keyboard and a sense of humor. She begins by explaining why data cleaning is as crucial as finding that last puzzle piece under the couch. In the world of data, unclean data is like having a coffee stain on your white shirt during a job interview. It just doesn't make a good impression. So Tora dives into the murky waters of missing values, which are like the black holes in our data universe. They suck in the light of accuracy, leaving us navigating in the dark. She jovially compares dealing with them to playing a game of data detective, searching for clues and filling in the blanks without jumping to wild conclusions. Imagine you're Sherlock Holmes, but instead of a magnifying glass, you're wielding software libraries like Python's Pandas and NumberPy. These tools are like the Watson to your Sherlock, assisting you in uncovering the hidden truths of your data. But the adventure doesn't stop there. Satori illustrates the importance of accurate data entry with the flair of a stand-up comedian. She likens inaccurate data to telling your GPS you're in New York when you're actually in London. It's going to be a long, confusing journey. Satori showcases programming techniques like data validation and standardization, turning our data from a wild jungle into a well-groomed garden. She uses Python's powerful libraries, including Pandas for data manipulation and Scikit-learn for pre-processing, transforming jumbled data into a masterpiece of clarity and precision. As we bid farewell to our data cleaning odyssey, let's put your newfound knowledge to the test with a fun multiple-choice question. What is the primary goal of data cleaning? A. To make data look shiny and new, like a freshly washed car. B. To ensure data accuracy and completeness, making it reliable for analysis. C. To make sure the data goblin doesn't have dirty underwear. D. To confuse data scientists with complex and unsolvable puzzles. Choose wisely and remember, a clean dataset is a happy dataset, just like a clean room is a happy room. 
Welcome to Episode 3, The Hunt for Outliers, where our wise and whimsical guide, Satori, embarks on a quirky quest to outweat those sneaky statistical sneaks, outliers. Imagine outliers as the oddballs of the data world, the ones who didn't get the memo about fitting in. They're like that one ant who shows up at family gatherings with a pet iguana on her shoulder. Definitely hard to miss. Satori begins with a crash course in Outlier Spotting 101. She introduces us to box plots, which are like x-ray glasses that reveal the hidden oddities in data. Picture a box plot as a superhero's gadget that yells, gotcha, every time it spots an outlier. It's basically the Where's Waldo of data visualization. Satori chuckles as she points out that even data has its rebels, those who refuse to conform to the norm. But how does one tame these wild data points? Enter the world of software libraries, the secret weapons in any data detective's toolkit. She navigates through libraries like Matplotlib and Python's built-in statistical library with the grace of a ballet dancer, showcasing their outlier taming tricks. Think of these tools as the digital equivalent of a shepherd's crook, gently guiding those stray data sheep back into the flock. Next, our data detective delves into the programming techniques for cornering these cunning culprits. She demonstrates methods like the z-score, which is like giving each data point a score for how normal it is. The weirder the data point, the higher its z-score, kind of like a weirdness meter. Satori also explores the IQR method, which is like setting a trap. It defines a normal range, and anything stepping outside this range is instantly branded an outlier. It's like having a bouncer at the club of data points, deciding who gets in and who's too wild to join the party. To wrap up our whimsical journey through the land of outliers, let's test your newfound knowledge with a quirky question. What is the primary use of a box plot in outlier detection? A. To create a colorful graph that looks nice in presentations. B. To play a game of statistical hide-and-seek, where outliers always lose. C. To visually identify outliers by displaying how data is spread and where it falls outside the norm. D. To calculate the exact numerical value of each data point. Remember, the right answer might just help you spot the iguana in your data family gathering. Choose wisely, and may your outlier hunting be as fun as a data-themed carnival ride. Welcome to Episode 4, Taming the Types. In this episode, our data wrangler Satora takes us on a hilarious hayride through the farm of data types. Imagine data types as a variety of farm animals. Some are like the cows, numerical data, straightforward and easy to count. Others are like chickens, categorical data, clucking around in their distinct groups. So Tori, with her straw hat and digital pitchfork, is ready to herd these data types into their proper pens. So Tori first tackles the wild world of casting and converting data types. It's like teaching our farm animals to speak different languages. Satori waves her magic wand, or rather, her keyboard, and transforms numbers into strings and vice versa. It's like watching a magician turning a horse into a unicorn, except it's all in the realm of data. With a few lines of code, Satori deftly shows how a 3 can stop being a mere number, 3, and start its new life as a string, 3. Then comes the challenge of handling categorical data, akin to organizing a chicken dance at the data barn. Satori introduces programming techniques like one-hot encoding, it's like giving each chicken its own dance floor or binary column. This way, the computer can boogie with the data without tripping over something. She also showcases label encoding, where each category gets a number, turning our chicken dance into a well-orchestrated ballet. The chickens, categories, are no longer just clucking around, they're now part of a beautiful, numerical symphony. So, after this whirlwind tour of the data farm, let's see if you can crack this egg of a question, what is one hot encoding used for in data handling? A. To warm the room up on a cold winter's day. B. Turning numerical data into a hot singles chart. C. Converting categorical data into a binary format for easier processing by computers. D. To find your perfect blind data date. Choose your answer and see if you're the rooster or the hen in the data coop. Welcome to Episode 5, The Merge Conflict. In today's thrilling installment of Data Adventures, Satori, our beloved data scientist, finds herself in the midst of a merge mayhem. Imagine trying to organize a potluck dinner where everyone brings a dish, but no one labels them. 
That's right, chaos ensues. Satori is faced with the daunting task of harmonizing data from different sources, much like trying to decipher a recipe written in multiple languages. First off, Satori introduces us to keys, the secret ingredients of data merging. Keys are like name tags for data, letting us know who brought the potato salad and who's responsible for that mystery casserole. With the right keys, matching data is a piece of cake. But beware, mismatched keys can turn your data feast into a food fight, leaving Satori to dodge flying pie charts and salad statistics. Next, Satori waltzes into the world of joins, a dance of databases where tables come together in harmony. But it's not always a smooth ballroom glide. Imagine trying to pair socks from a mountainous pile of laundry. Some matches are made in heaven, while others. Not so much. Inner joins, left joins, right joins, and the notorious full joins. Each join has its own rhythm and reason, and Satori masterfully choreographs this data dance-off. Finally, Satori addresses the elephant in the room. Data quality checks after merging. Data quality checks are an essential step in the merging process that helps to ensure the data being used is accurate, complete, and consistent. The process of data quality checks includes identifying and fixing errors, inconsistencies, and other issues that can affect data analysis results. Failing to perform data quality checks can spoil your results faster than a macaroni salad left out in the sun. After mastering the art of merging data with Satori, it's time to test your knowledge. Which of the following best describes a key in data merging? A. A tool to unlock encrypted data. B. A unique identifier used to match and merge data from different sources. C. The main subject of a database. D. The musical scale in a K-pop video. Choose wisely, and remember, in the world of data science, a well-prepared dish is all about the right merge. Welcome to Episode 6, Divide and Conquer. We continue the adventure with Satori, our dauntless data scientist who's more fearless than a lion tamer in a world of wild datasets. In today's episode, titled Divide and Conquer, Satori faces her most formidable opponent yet. The beast of large datasets. But fear not, for she's armed with her wit, charm, and a few nifty techniques up her lab coat sleeve. First up, Satori introduces us to the art of segmentation, a fancy term for breaking down the data monster into bite-sized chunks. Imagine trying to eat a whole watermelon in one bite, impossible, right? But slice it up, and it's a summer picnic. That's segmentation for you. Making the overwhelming manageable. It's like organizing your sock drawer, one pair at a time, and suddenly it's matching pairs everywhere instead of a mangled mess. Next, Satori dives into the world of sampling, where she expertly plucks out miniature versions of the massive data mountain to study. Think of it like taking a spoonful from a giant pot of stew to taste, if that spoonful is delicious, chances are the whole pot is a culinary masterpiece. Sampling is the secret sauce that adds flavor to data analysis without the need to gulp down the whole pot. Then, our hero wields the powerful tool of subsetting. It's like having a magical sieve that filters out the nuggets of gold from the river of data. Subsetting helps Satori focus on what's truly important, leaving the pebbles and sand behind. And let's not forget the arsenal of tools at her disposal, from SQL spells to Python potions, each more dazzling than the last, turning Satori into a data-wrangling wizard. After witnessing Satori's masterful techniques in dealing with large datasets, it's your turn to shine. What is the purpose of sampling in data analysis? A. To create a backup of the entire dataset. B. To reduce the size of the data for easier analysis. C. To add more data to the existing dataset. D. To fill up your stomach after you've skipped lunch. Choose wisely, and remember, in the realm of data, divide and conquer is not just a strategy, it's a way of life. Welcome to Episode 7, The Pattern Puzzle. Buckle up, dear viewers. Today's episode with our data detective Satori takes us on a visual escapade into the world of exploratory data analysis. We're on a quest to find hidden trends and insights in a jumble of numbers. Satori, armed with her trusty white lab coat and a keen eye for detail, introduces us to the art of spotting patterns using visualization tools. 
Imagine trying to solve a jigsaw puzzle, but the pieces are bits of data, and your reward is a picture painted with the strokes of information. Satori turns this complex process into a visual feast, transforming bland spreadsheets into vibrant charts and graphs. It's like watching a painter bringing a blank canvas to life, but instead of paint, Satori uses data. With a swish of her magic trackpad, Satori unveils the power of these tools. Bar graphs, pie charts, scatter plots, the gang's all here. Each tool is like a character in a sitcom. The bar graph is the straightforward one, the pie chart cuts everything evenly, except for the last piece, and the scatter plot has superpowers, it can be used to plot 3D data, showcasing temporal, spatial and depth components. So, after a whirlwind tour of colorful visuals and insightful revelations, it's time for the ultimate test. Here's a question that will check your data visualization skills. Which visualization tool could Satori use to plot ocean observing data? A. The bar graph, standing tall with each category. B. The scatter plot, spreading dots at depth like phytoplankton in the ocean. C. The pie chart, slicing data into perfect pieces. D. The line graph, drawing the highs and lows of data. Choose wisely, and remember, in the world of data, the right visualization can turn a puzzle into a masterpiece. Welcome to Episode 8, The Graphical Gateway. Today's episode of our data adventure series is a bit like a treasure hunt, but instead of a map marked with an X, we have Satori our data savvy navigator guiding us through the world of web mapping. In this episode Satori trades her lab coat for a digital compass as she dives into the enchanting land of leaflet and streamlet, making web cartography seem as easy as baking a pie. A pie chart that is. First up, Satori introduces us to Leaflet, a tool that's less about leaves and more about leading you through the forests of data to the clearings of insight. She elegantly demonstrates how to create interactive maps that not only show you where you are, but also tell you stories about what's around you. It's like having a wise old owl in your pocket but instead, it's a map with superpowers, capable of zooming and panning at the flick of a finger. Then, with a twirl and a click, Satori brings Streamlit into the spotlight. Imagine a stage where your data performs, and you're the director. That's Streamlit for you, turning complex data scripts into user-friendly web apps faster than you can say abracadata. With widgets and sliders, Satori shows how this tool makes your data dance to your tune, creating a real-time display that's more mesmerizing than a magician pulling rabbits out of a hat. But wait, there's more. Satori doesn't stop there, she brings out the grand finale with a mention of Folium, the magic wand for mapping with Python. It's like Leaflet's cousin but speaks Python, turning geographical data into visual stories, making you feel like a cartographic wizard. With Folium, Satori paints the globe with data, turning numbers into narratives that even your grandma would love to hear. After this digital cartography journey with Satori, it's time to test your newfound knowledge. Which tool did Satori use for creating interactive maps? A. WebSockets, for that real-time magic touch. B. Leaflet, leading the way through data forests. C. Python's Folium, weaving web spells into maps. D. Google Maps. Choose wisely, and remember, in the world of data, every point on the map tells a story. Welcome to Episode 9, Correlation or Causation. Today, Satori is diving into the perplexing world of causation and correlation. A question that has puzzled thinkers since the dawn of charts. Imagine Satori as a detective, her white lab coat fluttering like a cape, as she unravels the mysteries of data relationships. It's a bit like dating. Just because two datasets are seen together at the movies doesn't mean they're in a relationship. First up, Satori introduces us to Correlation Matrices, a tool that's less about cozy blankets and more about shining a light on sneaky relationships between variables. Think of it as a data dance floor, where variables pair up for a tango. Sometimes they move in perfect harmony, showing a strong correlation, and other times, they awkwardly step on each other's toes, indicating little to no connection. Satori, with her nifty charts, makes sure we don't miss a single beat of this intricate dance. But wait, there's a plot twist. Just because two variables move together, does it mean one caused the other to shimmy? Enter causation, the trickier cousin of correlation. 
Satori, in her element, uses scatter plots and heat maps to plot the drama of these relationships. It's like watching a soap opera of data points, some are meant to be together, while others just share the screen by sheer coincidence. As the episode wraps up, Satori reminds us that in the realm of data, appearances can be deceiving. It's easy to assume that because ice cream sales and sunburns increase together, indulging in a sundae might turn you red. But that's where our data hero steps in, teaching us to look beyond the surface. So, armed with our trusty tools, we're ready to tackle the age-old question, what did Satori use to reveal the secret dance of variables in the data? A. Ice cream and sunburn charts. B. Correlation matrices. C. Scatter plots and heat maps. D. Her microscope. Choose wisely, and remember, in the world of data, it's all about finding the rhythm without stepping on any toes. Welcome to Episode 10, The Model Framework. Starring our beloved data maestro Satori, this episode demystifies the art of model creation. Imagine Satori as a master chef in the kitchen of data, where models are not runway stars but recipes for making sense of the world's most complex ingredients, data. With her white lab coat doubling as a chef's apron, Satori introduces the audience to the essential cookbooks of data science, scikit-learn, TensorFlow, and PyTorch. Picking the right cookbook, she says with a wink, is half the recipe for success. But wait. A model is only as good as its chef's understanding of the ingredients. Satori, so with the precision of a Michelin-starred chef, dives into the importance of choosing the right algorithm. Algorithms, she explains, are like the secret spices of our data dish. Some add a zing, like the random forest algorithm, while others, like neural networks, slowly simmer the data to perfection. The audience is hooked, watching as Satori stirs the pot of data, adding a pinch of decision trees here and a dash of support vector machines there, all while dodging overfitting like a kitchen fire. In her lab-turned kitchen, Satori doesn't just cook, she orchestrates a symphony of data. With each tool and library, she crafts models that predict, classify, and uncover hidden patterns. But remember, she cautions, her spoon pausing midair, a model is only as good as the data it's fed. Garbage in, garbage out. The crowd chuckles, envisioning a trash can filled with messy, unstructured data being shown the door. As the episode comes to a delightful close, Satori serves her perfectly crafted model on a platter of insights. The audience is left craving more, but not before a pop quiz to see if they've been paying attention to the chef's secrets. What is essential for choosing the right model framework? A. Selecting the fanciest algorithm, because fancier is always better. B. Picking the right tools and libraries, like scikit-learn, tensorflow, and pytorch. C. Adding as many spices as possible, without tasting the data. D. Ensuring the data is as messy as possible to give the model a challenge. Choose wisely, and remember, in the kitchen of data science, the right recipe makes all the difference. Welcome to Episode 11, Feature Engineering. Our feisty data scientist, Satori, tells the class that feature engineering is an essential and creative aspect of data science, often regarded as the backbone of predictive modeling and analytics. It involves the transformation and manipulation of raw data into meaningful features that effectively represent the underlying problem to predictive models. Satori so elaborates that this process not only enhances the performance of the models but also makes the data more understandable and usable. It's akin to a chef meticulously preparing ingredients, ensuring each component complements the dish, enhancing flavors, and ultimately contributing to a delightful culinary experience. Next, Satori explains domain knowledge. Understanding the context and the specific domain of the data is crucial, as it guides Satori in crafting meaningful features that resonate with the problem at hand. For instance, in a time series dataset related to weather forecasting, features such as temperature trends, humidity levels, or time factors like the hour of the day or the month of the year can be engineered to improve model accuracy. This stage is where creativity meets science. Data scientists explore, hypothesize, and iterate, shaping the raw data into a refined form ready for modeling. 
The toolbox for feature engineering is rich and varied, with each tool serving a specific purpose. Pandas and NumberPy are foundational libraries in Python, offering a wide array of functions for data manipulation and transformation. It's an iterative and experimental process, demanding a blend of intuition, creativity, and analytical thinking. The goal is not just to feed the model, but to enhance the data in a way that the model can grasp the nuances of the problem, leading to more accurate predictions and insights. Like a sculptor chiseling away at a block of marble, a data scientist refines and molds the data, revealing the hidden patterns and insights within. Which of the following statements best describes the process of feature engineering in data science? A. Using domain knowledge to transform raw data into meaningful features that improve model accuracy. B. Using any old data, regardless of the quality or relevance of features. C. An automated process where data scientists drink coffee and gossip while transforming or creating new features. D. The final step in the data science workflow, performed after model training and evaluation. Choose carefully, and may you enjoy the experience of feature engineering as much as Satori enjoys her iced Americanos. Welcome to Episode 12, The Training Trials. Satori explains that training an AI model is a bit like teaching a new chef to master a signature dish, only instead of taste, the dish is judged on how well it predicts or classifies new data. The first step, model fitting, is where the chef, the model, gets to know the recipe, the algorithm, by heart. Here, the model is fed a bunch of ingredients, training data, and it learns how certain ingredient combinations, data features, affect the final taste, predictions, or classifications. The goal is to adjust the model's internal settings, parameters, so that it can produce the desired outcome with as little error as possible. This is like fine-tuning the seasoning to get the flavor just right. Our star Satori shows how parameter tuning is like tweaking the recipe to perfection. The chef has a set of spices, parameters, and they need to determine the exact pinch of each to achieve the best flavor, model performance. In machine learning, this process often involves methods like cross-validation, where different combinations of parameters are tested to find the best fit. It's a trial and error process that determines how much of each spice to add. Too much cumin, overfitting to the training data, and the dish might only taste good to a very specific palate. Too little salt, underfitting, and the dish might be too bland. And Satora likes her food spicy. The concept of training versus testing data in AI model training is akin to practicing the dish multiple times before the big dinner service, model deployment. The training data is like a dress rehearsal, where the chef can taste and adjust the dish as much as needed. The testing data, however, is like the final performance, where the dish is served to new customers, new data, to see if it meets their expectations. The model has never seen this data during its training, so it's a true test of how well the chef has learned to balance the flavors. It's crucial to have this distinction because it prevents the chef from simply memorizing a single table's preferences and failing to cater to a broader audience. Finally, imagine a kitchen where the head chef has to decide if the new dish is ready for the restaurant's menu. They use a separate set of taste testers, validation set, that weren't involved in the training to provide unbiased feedback. If the testers enjoy the dish, it's a good sign that the dish will be well received by the public, indicating the model is generalizing well and not just regurgitating the training recipes. This step is critical to ensure that the model can perform well in real-world scenarios, beyond the controlled environment of the kitchen. After listening to Satora's excellent lecture, can you answer this question? Which of the following options best describes the purpose of training and testing data? A. Training data is used to fit the model, and testing data is to evaluate its performance on unseen data. B. Training data is for parameter tuning, while testing data is just for fun. C. Training data is used to teach the model, and testing data is to show it off. D. Training data is to confuse the model, and testing data is to clear things up. Make your choice carefully, and watch out for those Carolina Reaper peppers. Welcome to Episode 13, Evaluation Expedition. 
Satora teaches us that evaluating AI models is a crucial step in the development of any machine learning or artificial intelligence system. It involves assessing the model's performance against a set of predefined criteria to ensure it meets the required standards for accuracy, efficiency, and generalizability. This process is not just about finding out how well the model performs on the training data, but also how it generalizes to new, unseen data. Different metrics and methods are used depending on the type of model and the problem it aims to solve. Satori shows us that in classification tasks, accuracy is a common metric that measures the proportion of true results among the total number of cases examined. However, accuracy alone can be misleading, especially in imbalanced datasets where one class significantly outnumbers the other. In such cases, precision and recall provide more insight. The F1 score, which is the harmonic mean of precision and recall, offers a single metric that balances the two. Finally, Satori stresses that an important aspect of model evaluation is the analysis of the model's ability to generalize to new, unseen data. Overfitting, where the model performs well on the training data but poorly on new data, is a common challenge. Techniques such as regularization, early stopping, and pruning can be employed to mitigate overfitting. Additionally, using a separate validation dataset to tune the model's hyperparameters before final evaluation on a test set can help ensure that the model is robust and performs well on unseen data. Based on the description of evaluating AI models, which of the following is not a common method for assessing model performance? A. Precision and recall. B. Overfitting. C. The F1 score. D. Mean squared error. As we get ready for the final episode, Satori hopes that you will evaluate her performance favorably. Welcome to episode 14, Data-Driven Decisions. Satori, our intrepid data scientist, stands confidently at the forefront of a packed auditorium ready to share her insights on decision-making powered by data. With a clear, engaging voice, she begins by highlighting the essence of data-driven decision-making in today's world. Through vivid examples, Satori illustrates how businesses leverage vast amounts of data to make informed decisions, ranging from simple operational adjustments to complex strategic shifts. She emphasizes the transformative power of analytics in optimizing processes, enhancing customer experiences, and driving innovation. Diving deeper, Satori shares case studies from various industries to showcase the real-world impact of a data scientist's work. She talks about a retail company that used predictive modeling to tailor product recommendations, significantly boosting sales and customer satisfaction. Another example features a healthcare organization that applied machine learning to patient data, improving diagnostic accuracy and patient outcomes. These stories not only highlight the versatility of data science across sectors, but also underscore the profound influence data scientists wield in shaping the future. Satori then shifts the narrative towards the ethical considerations and challenges that accompany the role of a data scientist. She discusses the importance of responsible data use, privacy concerns, and the potential biases in AI systems. Through these reflections, she stresses the need for transparency accountability and continuous learning within the data science community to ensure that the advancements in the field contribute positively to society. As the presentation concludes, Satori leaves the audience with a teaser for potential future data mysteries. She speaks of the uncharted territories in data science such as the exploration of quantum computing in data analysis and the untapped potential of AI in solving global challenges. Her closing words echo a sense of wonder and excitement about the journey ahead, inviting everyone to ponder the endless possibilities that lie at the intersection of data technology and curiosity. Based on this lesson, what aspect did Satori say is crucial in the realm of data-driven decision-making? A. The importance of having a large data set. B. The role of ethical considerations and responsible data use. C. The need for high computational power. D. The focus on profit maximization. Thank you everyone for joining me on this fascinating journey through the world of data science. Your curiosity, engagement, and passion have made this adventure truly rewarding. As we part ways, I wish you all the greatest success in your future studies and endeavors in data science. Remember, every dataset tells a story, waiting for you to uncover its secrets.
keep exploring, keep questioning, and never lose the spark of curiosity that drives us forward. Together, we can unlock the endless possibilities that data holds for improving our world. Thank you once again and may your path be filled with insights and discoveries.